Good morning, everyone. A good Tavach, Shavua Tov to all of you that have been with us for a long time. Welcome back. And to those that are joining this group for the first time, welcome. As we are about to embark on a very monumental learning, and that is the Time of Devar, written by Rav Moshe Cordovero. As is our custom, I'd like to spend the first class giving a biographical sketch of Rabbi Cordovero, who is the author of the Torah Devara, because if we understand the greatness of the author, it will give us an appreciation to the greatness of the Sefer that we're about to read. So Rav, Cordovar, Rav Cordovero was born, we're not, we know the year, 1522, we don't know exactly where he was born. The last name Cordovero, it gives us reason to believe that he was from Cordovero, or the family at least was from Cordovero in Spain, and that they were most likely exiled from Spain in 1492 by the Inquisition. And at a young age, he ended up in Svas in Eretz So from 1522, again, at the, exactly what year he ended up in Svas, seems to be as a young child, he was already known as a young boy, as a prodigy, as a genius and as a young man of tremendous understanding and breadth and depth in his Torah knowledge. So much so that at the young age of 16 years old in 1538, he received a very elite smicha from one of the head Rabbanim in Svas, Rabbi Yaakov Beirav. And there were three other sages that were given smicha at this time together with him. One of them was Rabbi Yosef Cairo, who is the author of the Beis Yosef, who really is the codifier of Shulchan Aruch and all the Jewish law that we have. Yosef Cairo was much older than, the, than Rav Moshe Cordovero at the time, and yet he received the smicha, and Rav Cordovero also received it, and he's 16 years old. He was already giving shiurim. He was assigned as a dayan, as a judge in Sfas, he was a giant Talmudic scholar. At the age of 20, in 1542, the Ramak, that is how he is known, Rav Moshe Cordovero Reish Mem Kuf, the Ramak, the Ramak heard a heavenly voice that was urging him to study Kabbalah with his brother-in-law. His brother-in-law was of Shlomo Alkabetz, Alkabetz, who was the composer of the song that we sing every Friday night in Shul, L'Chadoidi. Rav Kabetz was a great Kabbalist himself, and the Ramak heard this voice from Shemayim, from the heavens, that told him, go and begin learning Kabbalah with your brother-in-law. So he's 20 years old, and he begins delving into the mysteries of the Zohar, which we know was, was compiled by Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, and the young Ramak mastered the text of the Zohar completely. However, since that the Zohar is written in a way that is vague, often vague, and there's not a discernible structure that could be found, he was looking for more clarity. So he wrote two Svarim to explain the deepest mysteries and complexity of, of the Zohar. <clears throat> One was called Or Yakar, which means the precious light. It's a 16-volume commentary on the Zohar. And the second one is called Pardes Vimeinim, <clears throat> which gave a systematic, Kabbalistic thought, which ended up explaining everything systematically in the, in the ideas of Kabbalah to explain the deepest parts of the Zayar itself. And this was something that was extremely important and brought the Ramak his great fame as the greatest Kabbalist of the generation of that time. From here, he went on to open up a Kabbalistic, a yeshiva for Kabbalists. And he led this yeshiva for the next 20 years of his life when he unfortunately passed away at a very young age, at the age of 48 years old. So he lived from 1522 until the year 1570 when he was only 48. In the last 20 years of his life, he had a Kabbalistic yeshiva where he was teaching the greatest disciples that would come from him. Amongst them, Rav Eliyahu Devidas, who was the author of the Reish Yitzchachma, Rav Chaim Bital, who became the official recorder 
of all the teachings of the Arizal, and of course the Arizal himself, who became the master Kabbalist after the Ramak. Now, legend has it that shortly before he passed away, they were gathered together and they realized that he was quite ill and that he was going to leave this world. And the Jewish people of Tzvas, who knew that their master, the Ramak, was the head disseminator of Kabbalah in the world, who is going to take his place afterwards? And the Ramak said the following, I'm soon going to leave this earth, but after my death you should know there will be someone who will, who, who will replace me. And even though you'll see that many of the things that he's going to say will seem to contradict the teaching that I've left you with, you should know that they stem from the same source as mine, and they're absolutely true. There is no steer, there will be no contradiction. The person who is going to emerge in my place is a spark of the neshama of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, and if you oppose him, you're actually opposing the Shechina, the, the divine presence itself. And he gave them a he gave them a sign how you know who this person is. He said the name I can't tell you. He said, but whoever will see the cloud, the pillar of the cloud that will be at my funeral procession and will be in front of my coffin, he is going to be my successor. A few weeks later, on the 23rd day of Tammuz, in the year of 1570, the Ramach, Ramosh Kordavera, passed away. And everyone was stunned by the news of his loss, and everybody came to his funeral and to eulogize him. Amongst them was the great Arizal, who ended up coming after him. And as they were taking his coffin to its final resting place, so they got to a place in the cemetery in Sfas where they felt they should bury him, and they were about to stop. The Arizal turned to them and he said, Don't bury him there. The cloud which is in front of his coffin is continuing to go on its way. It will stop where we are supposed to bury the great Ramak. And when they heard these words, everybody was stunned and they realized that the Arizal was now going to be the successor of the Ramak. And sure enough, from that day on, the Arizal took over where the Ramak left off and he disseminated the teachings of his Rebbe, the Ramak, and his own chidushim, his own insights and understandings of the greatness of Kabbalah. And as the Ramak said, if you learn them carefully and closely, you'll be able to understand that there's no contradiction. They're coming from the same place, giving you different angles on the greatness of Zohar and Kabbalah. Now, one of the greatest books which the Ramak is most famous for is the Taimer Devara, the palm tree of Devara, in which he goes through the 13 attributes of mercy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the premise is that our obligation and our job in life is to be Madama ourselves, to liken ourselves and emulate the 13 attributes of mercy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Sefer itself is written with tremendous layers of Kabbalah, of mysticism, of deepness, of the secrets of the universe, of how a simple Jew like ourselves in this world is going to be able to connect ourselves to the loftiness of the Shechina and become like the Shechina itself. And therefore, we're going to be using as a, a guidebook over here to bring us into a practical understanding how we're going to be able to fuse together the Kabbalah with with what we're able to perceive ourselves. I'm using the elucidated Tomer Devora, which was compiled by a very choshava, very special Talmud Chacham, whose name is Rav Shmuel Meir Riachi. I believe he's in Eretz Yisrael. And he takes commentaries of the Ramak from the Pardes Rimonim, from the Or Yoker, which is his commentaries on the Zayar, to be able to explain the deepest parts of this work so that we ourselves should be able to understand it down here as well. So we are, in, we are learning a Sefer that was written by perhaps the greatest Kabbalist maybe that the world had ever seen since Rav Shimon Bar Yochai. 
he is the one that was able to pass over that wisdom to the Arizal, and we are the beneficiaries that we have his great Sefer, the Toymer Devara, which is going to teach us how to be a person that is able to walk with every step that they take in the image of the Rivay Nishailam. And in these times that we are living in right now, where the, where the mission and the task of every Yid is to be marbek v'yid shemaim, to increase the honor to, to heaven, to be able to bring more of the Shekhinah to this world, the way in which we can do it is to become a part of the Shekhinah ourselves. And that is what we are embarking upon as we learn together the great work of the Ramak, the Toymer Devara. Yes, Hashem will start the text itself tomorrow. And now at least we have an understanding of the greatness of the man behind this Sefer. Have a wonderful day.